class. So let me just first acknowledge a couple things real quick. So uh, first of all, you know, thank you for being here. I want to reiterate uh, all the things I said way back, you know, way, way, way back in late August. Uh, you know, your ideas matter. I can't wait to see what you do as game developers as you matriculate through, or if you're here from another program and then this is like a cool class you took or you're uh, an undeclared and are going into something else, I look forward to see what you do uh, with the very high quality. And I'm not saying that with any amount of, of snark. It is a very high quality education we offer here. This is a very fine school. It, uh, I promised myself if I ever stopped doing that, which I love the most, which is making games, it was going to be for a school I, I deeply respected. So uh, I look forward to see what, what all of you do, both in the games program and animation program and elsewhere. So thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, we've knocked a lot of rust off of this. Uh, this has been a, a great beta test, lots of good insights to make this class better. Actually, and I have like 50 people already taking it in the spring, uh, even though it's off sequence. So we'll get to immediately implement improvements. Uh, and then in the fall of next year, when we get the next kind of natural course of freshmen, it'll be uh, better and better and better. So uh, hopefully this class has given you some knowledge and, and confidence and some hands-on experience uh, without, you know, some of the uh, burdens of, of technology. So thank you all. Bless you all. Thank you for being in this class. Okay, so what I like to do in the last class, uh, I started this last year and I'm going to do this today is I like to throw out anything that might actually be useful for you at all and instead attempt to, in the about 42 or 3 minutes I have left, explain the entire Metal Gear saga to you. So let's go ahead and try to do that. All right. Okay, so let me make sure I got the screen on. Recording's already going. Um, I Last year I did this on the whiteboard. I filled up the entire, I mean whiteboard, uh, and I didn't even get through all the games. We're not going to get through all the games today. Uh, and you'll notice the PowerPoint slides get crappier and crappier as we go. Uh, this is me about 80 minutes ago in a caffeinated fever rush uh, because I didn't want to mess the whiteboard up here. So um, I am, yes. This is definitely getting recorded, yes. Uh, so let's get started uh caveats there will be spoilers of course so you know if you're worried about that you know i'm not doing an attendance word today you can just leave honestly if you're like oh i don't want to be spoiled uh, all right uh the other thing is uh wow that's great yeah scott he's out of here scott's like i do not want to be spoiled right that's awesome thank you scott for uh you know preserving the integrity of the plot i do promise you though I promise you that you won't understand this after I'm done, and it'll all be as if it was new anyway, because it's Metal Gear, okay? Yes, real quick. I didn't get that far. I, I stop at MGS4, and also just other quick caveats, and I have to get rolling here because there's so much to cover. Uh, there's some, uh, I, I'm not like trying to get into like Metal Gear Acid 1 or 2 or Portable Ops, uh, which is sort of kind of canon or not canon. Uh, I'm really sticking to MGS3, uh, uh, Peace Walker, uh, MGS5, and uh, uh, the original Metal Gear, its sequel, MGS, uh, and Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4. Okay, so those are the games I'm focusing on here. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so when we're talking about Metal Gear and its lore, and again, we are focusing on its lore here, we're going to talk about uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. It's the third game in the series, but it's the earliest one chronologically. I know that's confusing. Uh, a, a lot of this will be confusing, trust me. So we're going to go back, all the way back to the beginning of the 20th century, and we're going to talk about the philosophers. And oh, by the way, unlike other lectures, I'm just going to try to power through this. So... Uh, usually I like interchanging questions. Just let me power through this so I can try to get through all 33 odd slides here. Okay, so uh, the philosophers group of wealthy, powerful people, they formed after World War One because World War One's really bad. We want to prevent this by being kind of like this Illuminati covert organization and all of that. Uh, this did not go well because World War Two happened, right? So they totally failed at this. Um, one of the key themes of all these games, I feel bad because I'm going to like shortchange some of the more complicated themes these games have. Uh, the themes will seem overly simplistic. Uh, forgive that. That's just me uh, trying to overview this. But one of the big themes, don't try to control the world. This is bad. Don't try to do that. That's a major theme of, of these games. 
Okay, so that brings us to this point. The philosophers, they spin out of control. World War II happens. Oh no, it just doesn't work at all. Imagine like 12 people or whatever trying to control the entire world not going well. I know it's hard to imagine, but yes, it didn't go well. And so one of the things that results of this is they have all this money, and this money is called the philosopher's legacy. It's this gigantic, almost limit limitless amount of cash. And because uh, reasons, it ends up in the hands of this guy here, a Colonel Volgan of Russia, of the Soviet Union. Okay, so uh, Austin doesn't want to get spoiled either, I guess. Okay, uh, this could also just be WebEx connectivity issues. Uh, yeah, he joined. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, Colonel Volgan, he has all this money. It's a huge, huge amount of money. And basically, he uses it to form his own little country inside the Soviet Union. He's ostensibly part of the USSR, but not really because he has – all the money he needs. And oh, by the way, the thing about Colonel Vol uh, Volgin, he does shoot lightning, okay? that That's another thing. Uh, all right, so anyway. Yeah, just a small thing. Yeah, so uh, now we get to Operation Virtuous Mission, which is how this game starts. And so the CIA, the American CIA, sends a dude named Jack, codenamed Naked Snake, and he is sent to retrieve a Soviet defector named Sokolov from, the, from Volgin's weapons program. Uh, he's a defector. He tries to get to the United States, but Sokolov is stolen and, and taken back, and so he's sent to try to get him, okay? This does not go very well, though, because Naked Snake is betrayed by his mentor, whose name is The Boss, and the mission fails because of this. So we have to talk about The Boss. So uh, The Boss happens to be a daughter of one of the members of The Philosophers, Naked Snake's mentor, led the Cobra unit in World War II, the world's greatest soldier, okay? Uh, she also goes by um, Joy is one of her other code names. Uh, in Kojima games, everyone has like 20 different names. All right, that's one of the things about it. Okay, so um, because of this, this is a big problem because not only does uh, the boss or uh, ruin this mission, right? They don't get Sokolov, the scientist. Uh, she also hands Volgan a, a portable nuclear weapon and he uses it. So that's bad. Uh, and it's bad because the Soviet Union think that the United States did this. They're like, hey, you tossed a nuke at us. That's not nice. Um, and so the United States is like, well, actually, no, it's not our fault, even though it was our agent, the boss, who did this. Uh, and so Russia's like, oh, well, OK, but you're going to have to prove this to us by assassinating the boss and, you know, killing her. And the United States is like, OK, that sounds fair. And so now we have this solution, which is kill the boss, okay? That's uh, the next thing that happens in this game. So Naked Snake, um, because, you know, this is the only person that can possibly, you know, compete with the world's greatest soldier, is sent back to Russia in uh, Operation Snake Eater, the title of the game. And this uh, operation is basically kill the boss, but also... Uh, to figure out what the heck's going on with Volgan and why why does he have all this money? What does he need it for? All of this. So Snake must defeat not just the boss, but her old Cobra unit from World War II. Some of the best boss fights in video game history. Play this game. It's a great game. He discovers the Shagahod, which is that weird looking thing. Uh, this is what Sokolov, the weapon scientist, worked on. So the Shagahod is a bipedal tank that can launch nukes. Oh no, that's really bad. But another scientist named Granin says it's crap. It's not actually that good. He has, like, the actual real cool thing, like uh, something much, much better that Volgan didn't like and so he passed on. And that is something he happens to call Metal Gear, okay? Uh, that, uh, so Granin's the inventor of the Metal Gear, okay? So uh, also, quick note, uh, Granin sends all of this stuff to a scientist friend in the USA named Huey Emmerich. That's kind of super important, although we're not going to get to talk about him as much as I'd like. Okay, so Snake finds and destroys the Shagahod with the help of this person, Eva, another spy. Uh, Snake also has to deal with Ocelot. Now, no, uh, Ocelot doesn't actually know, and I don't think anyone except maybe the boss, perhaps, knows that this is actually, like, the son of the boss. Like, she has a kid and, and then, like, doesn't raise him, I guess. Whatever. Uh, so, uh... Ocelot thinks he's like the coolest guy around until Naked Snake totally defeats him utterly. Um, and because of this, he basically worships Snake throughout all these games, but in kind of a frenemy sort of way. Just YouTube, you know, Ocelot, you're pretty good, and you'll get the context of that. Okay, uh, so big spoiler here. Big, 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 big spoiler. Um, of course, if you're here, you know, go ahead and just run out of the room now because uh, this is, you know, one of, one of the greatest games of all time. It's a big spoiler about it. 
Um, okay, so Snake confronts and with tremendous difficulty defeats the boss. Russia's happy. USA is happy. Hooray. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, there's no worldwide nuclear Armageddon, except there's a problem, okay? Turns out the United States was the one that told the boss to defect. The United States was the one who said, hey, go ahead and betray your mission and uh, prevent Sokolov from being rescued and all this. And the reason is because they didn't care. The United States didn't care about anything about Metal Gears and tanks and nukes. What they really wanted was to steal the Philosopher's Legacy. That's what they were actually after, all of that money. So this was all just a complicated gambit by the United States to get this money, okay? So uh, obviously, um, uh, Naked Snake finds this out, okay? Uh, and he's big mad by this. So uh, you, already you can see the quality of the PowerPoint slides declining as I'm just pounding all this out. So uh, the United States rewards Naked Snake with the rank of Big Boss because he defeated the boss. So, you know, I guess that makes sense. Big Boss feels betrayed, however. He killed his mentor for what? So the USA can get a whole bunch of money? So themes emerging from the boss. What is loyalty? What is patriotism from Big Boss? The nations truly value their soldiers? What is a soldier? Overall, don't trust governments. Oh, don't take over the world. That's bad, too. Okay. Uh, now we go all the way from the 1960s to 1974. Uh, MGS Peace Walker, also really good game. Uh, Big Boss is now a mercenary because, you know, he hates America because they betrayed him and they're awful and all that. So he attempted to form a new version of the philosophers called the Patriots with all of his old buddies from Metal Gear Solid's uh, 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 Snake Eater and uh, particularly his commanding officer, Zero, from that game. Uh, but this does not work. Uh, this has already kind of fallen apart by 1974. This was an attempt to honor the boss by doing world control the right way. It fails. Again, don't try to control the world. It doesn't go well. Okay, so after this, so the Patriots, you know, uh, uh, big, big Boss leaves the Patriots because he's mad at them and doesn't think that's working. So he's just a mercenary in South America. Uh, he, uh, some of this is described in what's considered a non-canon game called Portable Ops. Uh, but he eventually encounters um, a character named Kaz Miller. This fellow here is actually one of my favorite characters in, the, in these games. Um, he becomes a friend and kind of a kooky entrepreneur who decides to build a private army. So they make this thing called Militaire Sans Frontiers. My French is bad. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, via kind of this offshore oil platform that they convert to a mother base, which is a theme that comes up again and again in, in these games. Okay, so... Big Boss eventually finds Huey Emmerich, the dude that got the plans from Granin to build the first Metal Gear, and another scientist named Strangelove, uh, and they're working for this CIA dude, the best name Kojima has given anyone, Hot Coldman. That's his name. His name is Hot Coldman. I'm serious. It's actually that name, all right? I am not making that up. That's the name of the villain in Peace Walker. Uh, so Hot Coldman was a CIA operative, and he's made the world's first Metal Gear, which is called Peace Walker. Uh, using Granin's designs from MGS3 with uh, Huey Emmerich and Strangelove working on it or whatever. whatever. And so remember, in these games, a Metal Gear is a mech. It's just a mecha that can walk and fire nukes. And the idea that you can have something that is bipedal, that can walk on uneven terrain and launch nuclear weapons is, is you know, super bad and all that, right? Okay. So Big Boss defeats Peace Walker, uh, and though he realizes he, uh, and through this, he realizes he wants to create a special nation only for soldiers. His outer heaven, he calls this. But remember the Patriots? You know, that failed attempt to copy the philosophers, you know, rule the world and all that, but benevolently and all, like all villains think they're doing. Uh, well, the Patriots, which have several names at this point, they're either called XOF or Cypher, don't ask, I don't know. Uh, they don't like what Big Boss is doing with his Militaire Sans Frontiers thing uh, from Peace Walker. And the reason, of course... The Patriots want to control the world, and they think Big Boss might actually control the world, so that's not good. So they pretend to be UN inspectors and utterly destroy uh, the mother base from Snake Eater. And this is depicted in the prequel game to MGS5, uh, Ground Zeroes. <sighs> okay, and this also leads to one of the famous meme quotes uh, from MGS5, the Kaz Miller, they played us like a, a you know darn fiddle that comes from that, that sequence of events. Okay, so MGS5, The Phantom Pain. Big Boss now becomes Punished Snake when he is put in a coma after trying to escape the destruction of Mother Base. Kaz Miller, while uh, Punished Snake is recovering, forms a new mercenary group called the Diamond Dogs. 
Okay, Punish Snake recovers and is named Venom Snake. Don't ask. Still also called Big Boss 2. Again, the, all these characters have like 10 different names. He is rescued in the hospital by Ocelot. Remember that guy all the way here. That guy. Uh, that guy. He's rescued by that guy. Remember him? Okay, so let's get... Yes, we're getting back. Uh, oh, it went, went too far. Okay, there we go. So he's rescued by uh, Ocelot. Okay, so it's now basically uh, Ocelot, Kazmiller, and the newly named Venom Snake. Yes, he has another name. Builds up the Diamond Dogs, uh, another offshore base off the Seychelles, for the purposes of revenge against Cypher, XOF, the Patriots. Except, uh, at this point, Major Zero, the guy who founds the Patriots, who doesn't like Big Boss anymore, he's actually now a vegetable because he was poisoned by this guy, Skullface. Very literal name. I mean, he literally has a skull for a face, so I guess that's appropriate. Uh, Skullface has taken over Cypher XOF, and Skullface's original job, by the way, was he was basically the cleanup crew guy, so whenever, uh, uh, whenever Naked Snake would do a mission for Major Zero, uh, Skullface would come in and, and clean up or whatever. Um, he, I guess he kind of got tired of doing that. Uh, so basically, yes, he poisons Major Zero, which makes him into a vegetable, which means he can take over all of his stuff. And, you know, he wants to, yes, take over the world. And we've already established this doesn't go well when people try to do this. Uh, okay, so how does he try to take over the world? Easy. He, uh, oh, i got to take a deep breath. He just does it via a simple process of finding a novel parasite that attaches itself to vocal cords that kills you when you speak certain languages because of the vibrations of that language and makes it so that English in particular will kill you because he is big mad that English is the lingua franca of the world. No, yes, he has also kind of sort of developed some Metal Gear, so there's that. Okay. Oh my God. Thank you. All right. So, uh... Thank you. So uh, Venom Snake eventually defeats Skullface and destroys the Metal Gear while also keeping it because reasons. Uh, so we have a new theme to add to our list of themes. Revenge is bad. Add this to never trust governments. Don't try to control the world. And what does it mean to be a soldier? Okay, so now we're all the way now to like the mid, actually 1987, I guess. So we're now at the original Metal Gear uh, the game that, uh, you know, I saw on the original Nintendo, and, and this is the first, you know, obviously the actual first iteration of this uh, IP. Uh, so now you are not Big Boss anymore, but you are a soldier under his command named Solid Snake. Your mission is to infiltrate a fortress for soldiers named Outer Heaven uh, who have, that made a Metal Gear, right? Remember, a mecha that launches nukes. But as it turns out, Big Boss, the actual guy who runs Outer Heaven, uh, Big Boss is the actual guy that runs this Outer Heaven, and he made the Metal Gear. That's the big plot twist. You get all the way to the game, end of the game, and you find out that your commanding officer, Big Boss, is actually the bad guy, and you have to kill him. So you have to kill Big Boss. Yes, yes, this guy, this guy, that guy. You have to kill him. He's evil now. He's bad. Uh, so you have to actually take him out in the first Metal Gear game uh, because, you know, uh, he had this idea of I, I want to make a nation for soldiers with the military sans frontiers and diamond dogs. And now that becomes outer heaven. But he kind of goes into that thing that happens again and again in the games where in these games where he kind of wants to, you know, take over the world. And this is bad. So you have to take him out. Okay, so Metal Gear 2, uh, which did not actually get released in the United States originally, although it did get localized uh, when they did the HD Metal Gear collection on the PS3, highly recommended. It's a, uh, the original Metal Gear is good, but dated. The, this Metal Gear game is like really, really, really good, like 2D kind of overhead gameplay, beautiful sprite work, so, so good. So uh, for speed, let's just say you do all the stuff in Metal Gear again, right, as Solid Snake again. Um, it's just sort of a more technically advanced version. Now, Kaz Miller, remember that guy? That would be this guy here. Kaz Miller, remember that guy? He's like your helper in this game. Yes, that game. So he's like one of the people helping you here. He's known as Master Miller here, not Kaz Miller. Uh, so he tells you, you know, Big Boss, uh, uh, he's back. Even though you killed him in Metal Gear, he's back. And Kaz, uh, Master Miller is one of the, he tells you, even though he was his buddy in the old games, he's like, he's super evil, you have to kill him. Uh, there's, he's big mad about stuff from MGS5. Huge, massive MGS5 spoiler now. Big, big spoiler, big warning. This is a big spoiler here. Turns out that Big Boss is actually alive. Um, he isn't really dead and you have to kill him again. And the reason for this is that the person you played as in MGS5 wasn't actually Big Boss, but it was like a fake one. It was someone that was like hypnotized and, 
and made to think that he was actually Big Boss. And that's, by the way, the person you kill in the first NES game. So a lot of ways, MGS5 is retconning the original Nintendo game or, or maybe more clearly explaining why you have to kill Big Boss twice because that was always a weird thing from the original games. You kill him once and then he comes back again. Why? Well, whoa, it's because, like, there were actually two of them, right? There's a fake one and a real one. In this game, you kill the real one. <sighs> okay. Okay, now we get to Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1. Um, so you're still so uh, uh, Solid Snake, right, from uh, Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. Um, whoops, you're a genetic clone of Big Boss. You didn't know that. You find that out, I think, in this game somewhere. This is also getting to the point where I'm not fact-checking everything. So if I'm going to be wrong, I'm going to be wrong on these slides especially. Uh, turns out that you had a twin clone brother also named Liquid Snake. So there's like two of you, two genetic clones of Big Boss running around. Uh, and by the way, that happens because Major Zero was super worried about, like, losing the services of Big Boss in the late 60s, so he made this as part of his program. And it's actually why Big Boss leaves the Patriots, because he's mad that he, like, made clones of him without permission. I mean, that would get me mad, too, if I showed up to work and, uh, you know, Dr. Hartman at CGT office said, by the way, I was really afraid of losing you, so I'm going to make clones of you. I, I would not be happy. So, you know, I could sympathize. Uh, so turns out that Ocelot, remember Ocelot, that guy all the way back, that guy, remember that guy? Okay, all right, uh, that guy just so happens to be a big part of Metal Gear Solid, uh, because, remember, he worships Big Boss, he's like, this guy's the ultimate soldier, he's so awesome, um, and he feels that Liquid Snake is just like Big Boss, so now he's Revolver Ocelot, because he loves revolvers, uh, and he uh, helps Liquid Snake. And they steal a Metal Gear, and guess what they try to do? Take over the world, okay? Uh, and so uh, you you kill Liquid Snake and stop the, the Metal Gear and all that. So, okay, MGS2. Uh, there's actually a third clone of Big Boss uh, named Solidus Snake, and he's president of the United States, by the way. So some dude that everyone hates named Raiden is tasked with beating him. But Solidus probably has a point because actually the Patriots, led by that Major Zero guy who's a vegetable, set up these evil satellites in the internet, and they try to take over the world of memes. Okay, but Ryden, uh, but Raiden kills Solid Snake anyway, even though he was kind of right, uh, and and with Solid Snake's help, uh, you know, Solid Snake did like bad things too, but like you know, he had a point about the whole uh, evil satellite thing, I think. Okay, so uh, MGS4. Okay, so now Solid Snake is super old because his genetics are falling apart. No, oh, by the way, Revolver Ocelot grafted dead Liquid Snake's arm, somehow making him like Liquid Snake. So he's now Liquid Ocelot. And those evil satellites in the internet are taking over the world, and that's bad. So Old Snake teams up with Huey Emmerich's son, Hal. By the way, Huey is a horrible person, and Hal is good, just so you know. And they eventually defeat Liquid Ocelot's attempt to take over the world by hijacking the evil Patriot satellites in the internet. And instead, they destroy the satellites. Oh, one last thing. Big Boss, who we all thought was dead, shows up and turns out he realized he was in terrible error because, you know, taking over the world is bad and revenge is bad. And the boss's mentor never wanted that, and he tells Solid Snake, his son, but this... Uh, uh, but crap, he dies because he caught a special virus that Solid Snake was carrying specifically for that purpose, the end. All right. All right. Thank you. And I actually ended that, yeah, 20 minutes early. So uh, I think every semester I'll add to this a little bit more. Okay. Obviously, we're done. Uh, thank you for putting up with that and humoring me in this, in this regard. Have a wonderful break, and hopefully I'll see many of you next semester. <sighs> Whew. Very slow, but I haven't given up. Now that break's about to happen, I'm sure it'll pick back up again. So.